after I uploaded the video, please stop looking at yourself as a perpetual beginner in your target language. I was asked to translate three more Bible-based bookmarks from English to Spanish. I want to let you know how I did it, as well as tell you lessons I learned from doing that project. My name is Franklin, and this is FirstHousandHours.com. I'm here to inspire and motivate you to complete your first thousand hours of your language learning marathon. I don't teach languages, but I share an out-of-the-box mentality to help you learn languages on your own in a real-world context. I first want to begin by showing you how the three bookmarks that I helped with last year actually turned out and looked like. And so I really like the design on all three of these bookmarks. And I actually got a story that one person in Spain got one of these bookmarks and it blessed that person in their walk with the Lord. And so I was happy that I was not just doing a translation project, but I was also help, help, uh, helping make a difference in someone's life. And so I just wanted to talk to you about how I was able to help with this bookmark project. Um, and my process and going about doing that first like I did last time I prayed and then what I did differently this time is um, I tried to do the translation first by myself without any help from anything including Google Translate so I wrote in this notebook on pieces of paper in a double spaced way uh, my version of the translation of the document from English to Spanish so I wrote down the Spanish translation the best I could. I skipped words that I didn't know um, how to translate or whatever. And I did that in a double space way because after I, I finished writing down the translation for a, a one bookmark, you know, I did one bookmark at a time basically. Um, then I got the English um, from the bookmark and then I copied and pasted that and I put that into Google Translate. And so I used the Google Translation and my own writings and I, and I compared both of those to see if I could contribute anything else uh, to the artificial intelligence. And then also I use the Google translation to correct what I did. So I made a lot of mistakes, you know, and I had to X out things or whatever. Um, and that's why it was in double space again. But um, I, I just wanted to start out using my own mind instead of just depending upon artificial intelligence. So after that pro process was finished, then I put everything into a Google doc and then I shared that with at least one other native speaker of Spanish. And so then they could give me some feedback and all of that. And we were able to communicate through texting and WhatsApp during this whole process. And then sometimes as the project came to a close and things like that, I might have sent them like a PDF of how the bookmark looked or something like that. But there are multiple revisions that happened and I wanted to try to make sure that I could um, share the best um, translation that I could do as well as the other people that were helping me could do um, so that we could have a final product that would be the best it could be but in the process I made mistakes in the process you know not everything was was the best you know but the revision having um, ability to make revisions and all that helped and all that and I look at um, I mean I now look at translation projects kind of like me being an, an apprentice like let's say if I was apprenticing with um, trying to learn plumbing, I would be under a master plumber, but that doesn't mean I cannot contribute anything. No, I would be with the master plumber and I would be contributing what I could to the project, but I would be gaining more knowledge and experience. I would be challenging myself in different ways so that I could continue to, um, you know, slowly but surely um, gain more and more um, understanding to, to take on bigger and bigger projects. And so, um, in one sense, I was apprenticing under um, native Spanish speakers that could help me along the journey and help make the final product um, better. And so, uh, even if I was doing an English project, I'm sorry, even if I was doing like a, a graphic design project or something like that, like I've done in the past, I have other people that I will ask to help me um, make sure that I have um, have have used like the best wording that I have that, that I haven't made any grammatical mistakes or any spelling errors or anything like that and so especially in doing something in a foreign language I want to have other people helping me and so I'm very thankful for the people that did volunteer their time to help me with the project and so I also wanted to share with you some things that 
artificial intelligence couldn't help with with this project. And so one thing um, that that the the bookmarks talked about was Revelation 14, and specifically a part in Revelation 14 where it talks about how the gospel is supposed to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And so we were using um, the RVR 1960 version of the Bible. And so it says something, it doesn't say, obviously it doesn't say what the English says, but it says something similar to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. But Google Translate translated that just a little bit differently. So it didn't use the same biblical wording that is found in the RVR 1960 version of the Spanish Bible. So I was thinking, okay, um, there was a there was wording that I could change in that Google Translate document so that it could more reflect um, what was in Revelation 14. And so I did that. So, you know, artificial intelligence is not thinking about how can the wording be as similar as possible to the Bible. So that's where um, my mindset comes in so that I can actually contribute to the project. And there were some other things that... Um, Another member of the team was able to find that Google Translate or the artificial intelligence didn't find. And that was that person found an, an inappropriate word that Google Translate had translated. And, and I, it passed me. I didn't know it was an inappropriate word, but that person asked me, Franklin, did you use Google Translate to get to this word? And I said, yes. And she said, Franklin, don't use that word. <laughs> and so if she was not on the team, maybe that word might have not... Um, you know, that, that word might have been missed. And so I'm thankful that she was on the team and that um, that word was not printed or whatever. So she gave me another word that I could use in place of that. And so we definitely used that word. And then also um, she found that there were some different choices of words that you know could go into the document so that the document would be a little bit clearer than what Google Translate has. So we made some of those revisions and then also she noticed a grammatical mistake uh, from Google Translate. And so we made that correction as well. So uh, we just tried to improve upon the artificial intelligence and, you know, um, make things better. So I, I have seen in this project that there is a place for me to play in this. And, and just even organizing this project, helping it go forward, um, and there are other things that I contributed to the project that are um, outside of what I just shared, but I just specifically wanted to share things that um, artificial intelligence might not be able to catch. And so I was happy to do this. This is not to say that I'm like this master translator or something, but I, I realized that as I continue to put myself in challenging situations, I grow. And so um, I was happy for the challenge it was taxing, it was hard, it was difficult, but I continued to do it to the com completion and I'm thankful for those who helped with the project as well. And this got me excited about um, translation and putting myself out there and doing projects. And so there's a project in my denomination, in my church, um, where um, there's an author named Ellen White that is a Christian author that has I mean, written a lot of things about the Christian experience, the Christian life, and things that I have been blessed by that I would like to be seen more in other languages and including Spanish. Um, and so there's a crowdsource translation project that I can be a part of and I have actually contributed just a little bit in that project. I just did like one contribution really. <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to doing more things like that so I get to be able to work with other people so it's not just me just trying to do something on my own, but I get to work with other people um, to do something that, that I believe is going to be a blessing for other people. Um, I remember that Duolingo did something like this before they were trying to, to fund Duolingo by um, helping people gain skills that could uh, eventually help them to be able to, to, to translate things. So they were working with CNN, they were working with Wikipedia, but for whatever reason, I have not, no idea what the reason was but they stopped doing that. And now they have um, really tried to fund Duolingo based on advertising. And then they have like, um, I guess basically uh, things that you can pay for with Duolingo. But I look at that more of like a donation part, but but I'm wondering, are you trying to do, do translation projects? Are you trying to tra challenge yourself? There's a lot of need, I think, in this world for people that want to 
translate things from English to another language. And so um, have you looked into that? And, and if so, um, what are you trying to do? And if you're not even trying to do that, are you trying to do other things in your target language to help you come up to the next level? I would like to know, know about that in the comments. And then also I want you to click this video right here or this playlist right here that will share with you other challenges that I've faced and how I've sought to overcome those in my Spanish journey. My name is Franklin and this is for